what's up guys? Today we're doing some inshore saltwater fishing and we're in Boynton Beach. I just I think it's got a fish on. I thought I just lost him for a second. But we got a fish. We're gonna be exploring new areas today and hopefully catch some new species. Let's see what this guy is. And we're gonna get waked. Woohoo! in the boat. All right, so we broke off the skunk, first fish. Now we just gotta go to another spot and catch some more fish. Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Dutchess Love Shore here, of course, and uh, we have moved up to uh, the Lake Worth uh, Spillway area. And you folks, uh, a lot of times, Darcy gets comments about, uh, you know, some beginning fishing tips. And I just wanted to give you guys a, a quick way to, you know, that someone's just getting started and can catch a fish real quick. So what I got right here is called a, it's called a popping cork, and it's a very popular inshore saltwater tool. And so you got a popping cork, and it, and it make, makes this popping sound very simple. And then I got a 20 pound, or you can use a 30 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. We got about, I don't know, two feet here, whatever you want. And I'm using a Mustad uh, three-odd circle hook here, and, and with the shrimp. And all fish love shrimp, so you can use shrimp all the time. So in a circle hook gets the fish right in the corner of the mouth from us dad and almost every single time and that way you can release the shorts and release any sort of fish you don't want. So it's a real great uh, hook and we can, you can see it's right through the tail. You can get dead shrimp, live shrimp, uh, very cheap to get started fishing. So again, from the hook and I'm using a uni knot, you can see all the knots in the world on animatednots.com. Uh, it's a great tool and again I got a 20 to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader to my uh, popping cork and then I got uh, a mono from that too. Now if you have a uh, braid on your reel you want I like to put a little mono on top of here too because that way it, it kind of falls away from the from the bobber knife. If you have braid it might get all tangled up in here. And just for the rod people ask about that a lot. This is our rod we use all the time. Oh we got it upside down. This is basically what you might call your snook rod. This is a S accurate SR6. It's a great uh, inshore reel that we use all the time and this is on a tsunami uh, air wave rod and and that's a great uh, affordable ride too. So it's a great little setup. You can catch snook, tarpon, drums, redfish, almost anything in shore on this little setup. Trout, whatever you want. So uh, get out there and uh, catch some fish. Stop. Stop. Big jack. Holy monster jack. Monster 30 pound jack. Dude. Dude, he's huge. Dude. Dude, dude, did you see that jack? Yeah. Did you see his back? It's insanely monstrous. All right, got the boat. You see, he's dialed in on that monster fish. Dude, I think he's a freaking shark. We got another fish on. It's been a couple hours since we talked to you guys. We've been uh, driving around, looking at different spots, exploring inshore, the different depths, and trying to find structure and stuff like that. I've been trying to catch a sheep's head lately, um, just because I haven't caught one in a really, really long time. And we have shrimp, but we don't have fiddler crabs. And uh, I know there's some other kind of bait that works for them. But that didn't seem to be working, so we did some little bit of trolling. And uh, now we've got our, our second fish of the day. It's been pretty quiet so far. And uh, yeah, sorry we just haven't had a lot of action. We, we're trying though, we really are. I side hooked the Jack. Little Jack, he's talking to you guys. He doesn't like being caught. So I'm gonna let him go. But he got side hooked in like the forehead right here. But these guys get monstrous. Actually earlier today, like two hours ago, we saw a big explosion on the top and there was a big old mullet, like a 10 inch mullet. One of these guys, I saw one, he was huge. He must have been 30, 40 pounds, monster fish. It almost looked like a shark to me. Bye fish. It almost looked like a shark. So those things get monstrous. I would have loved to have catched a 30 pounder. They would fight like so hard and get my workout for the day. But now we gotta find a different species, I think. You know, honestly, it's just like a, such a beautiful day out here. I, I mean, I don't even mind. I mean, it's, this is, what is it, the 20th? Oh, inauguration day, Donald Trump's inauguration day, January 20th. And 
The weather, I mean, come down to Florida, guys. This is, do you see this, what's going on here? This is just gorgeous. We're gonna catch some fish, we're in a little flats boat. Um, so, you know, we're just having a real great time out here, Sizzle, right? Yeah, it'll be nicer if we had some action. Their, their sizzle gets real upset we don't catch fish, you know? And then it's added pressure, we don't catch fish for you guys. And uh, it's not kind of stinky, but um, we'll get them. You know, you can't get them every time. And geez, you know, thank, thank you guys so much for letting us come out here on, on, a, on a Friday. Turn, uh, turn, turn, turn. turn where? Why are you this deep over here. I know, I know, I drive up and down here all the time. I know where to go. It's not hitting bottom. It's six foot deep. It's the, I, I know where to troll. I catch the fish. I drive the boat, she catches the fish. All right. So, yeah, just having a beautiful day. It's awesome out. Next week, I think we're gonna try and get up to Indian River Lagoon. If anyone out there knows, uh, or is familiar with those areas, we use some guidance, that would be great. Or if someone wants to even take us fishing, or come fishing with us up at Indian River Lagoon, Mosquito Lagoon, maybe take a two day trip. We wanna get some redfish. So uh, that's gonna be a big goal for next week, I think. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Sheephead, tarpon, redfish, black drum. Yeah. <laughs> on and on and on. She's a little, she's a little befuddled today. Yeah, we gotta get tarpon. The tarpon's not, not tarpon season yet, but we're gonna hit those redfish, I think, next week, hopefully. And then, and today, our, our also Darcy, they mentioned that our, uh, what's that thing called? The trolling motor broke down. Uh, it spun the prop like my other boat did, so I gotta get that fixed. Actually, I gotta get that fixed before we go to uh, up there. Yeah. But I also. Hey, there's a new problem on this boat. <laughs> but I also wanna tell you, I, I, yesterday we had a meeting with uh, ACR, and they make EPIRBs and PLBs. And it looks like that they're going to be one of our new sponsors, and we're going to be talking about safety and PLBs and EPIRBs all the time around here. So get used to it. It's, it and we're working together with um, those, the parents from Jupiter. What's that? What's the kid's name? Justin, I think. No, Austin and Perry. Austin, Austin and Perry. Stefanos. Austin Stefanos and Perry. I forget his last name. Austin and Perry. So they had a very unfortunate accident a couple years ago. Really brought a lot of awareness to EPIRBs and personal located beacons that everybody should have on their boat, even in Lake Okeechobee. So uh, that's real important stuff, and we're real honored to you know, be working with a reputable uh, company in the industry. It's really great for Darcy, as a, especially as a young lady angler, getting this kind of respect. So thank you very much. Uh, you know, Darcy, of course, works hard, but it's all thanks to you guys. If we didn't have you guys as the fans, uh, you know, these guys w wouldn't call us, obviously. So um, it's, 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 it's a cooperation, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, so we're gonna get the back to do a little fishing here and hopefully catch some fish, get some sunbathers over here. Let's see if we can see them. All right, those stop spying on the sunbathers. So we're driving down, there's all million dollar homes here. Someone made a video recently going fishing uh, by million dollar homes. We can do that every day. It's, we're just very fortunate. Our home is not a million dollar home. It's, it's I, we live in a shack. No, <laughs> it's a very nice house, we appreciate it. It's over, that was weird. Weird hit from a fish. Well, we'll see what it is. <laughs> People making weird noises on the road. <laughs> Anyways. Um, all right, so we got to catch this fish now. We haven't caught a fish in a little bit. It's been a little slow. Current slowly coming in, so just not a whole lot of action. I've got a snook. Awesome. Get them all messed up. All right, nice little snook. We've been catching a lot of little fishies lately, but that's okay. It's a snook. I'm gonna get these hooks out of her first before I hold her up. All right, I need uh, pliers. I think they're. All right, that's one. All right, hooks are out. Pretty little snook. This one's got to get much bigger. I would say it's about a 20 incher, maybe a little less. But it's just amazing how a 20-incher is so tiny compared to a slot fish. A 28-inch 28, 28 snook is big. So this one's got to get really big and become a monster fishy one day. Ooh, she's ready. Okay. I don't know what you guys eat, eat on the boat, but I know you've eaten some yucky crap on the boat or while you're fishing, doesn't matter if you're on the shoreline or the pier or on the boat. Darcy is currently feeding me a cold beef em espanada, who do you say it? Empanada. Empanada. She's from Miami. Uh, this might be getting a bite. So, from racetrack, from like five hours ago. So, this is pretty bad. So comment below the worst thing you've eaten on a boat. 
for lunch. This is terrible. It's pretty gross. I'm starving to death. It was two o'clock in the afternoon, but that's what happens when Brian doesn't bring no food on the boat. He never does. So he likes to starve himself and then complain he's got no food. So he better be lucky he's eating that. Saying that might be true. I complain I'm too fat, so I don't bring any food, and I don't need no food. But then I get hungry and grumpy. He gets very grumpy, guys. I get very grumpy. I'm he's very grumpy when he's hungry. Darcy gets very grumpy in the morning. And, and another time. Fish on and we're right next to our favorite boat. So if you guys have been watching my videos, sorry for the, uh, the loud construction going on here. Uh, any help here? <laughs> All right, so if you guys have been watching my videos, um, one of my recent videos, the rare inshore catch video, uh, that was the first time I'd ever caught a, 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 a ribbon fish or seen one alive. And sure enough, here's another ribbon fish. Woo! Ribbon fish in the boat. Check them out. Really colorful, super, super sharp teeth. The ribbon fish I had caught last week was side hooked in his uh, side hook, but this guy was actually literally hit this. He was hungry. You can see the teeth on him. But he's super iridescent. So cool looking. Let's see if I can get this off of him. Yep, there we go. His tail actually whips you. Let's see if I can see them turned around real quick. The sun. Beautiful fish. Woo! Big teeth. All right, so I guess it's not so rare to catch these fish in shore anymore. But still cool, caught another one. I guess they're here in this in my area for some reason. A lot of them are inshore, feeding on bait and whatnot. But this guy's about the same size as the one I caught last week, about a three footer, I would say, close to that. But I'm gonna let him go. I think I could keep him as bait if I wanted to. It actually is really good kingfish, king mackerel bait. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and release them. So let's, love their colors. If they made nail polish color that like that, that would be awesome. Here he goes. Swimming away. Awesome. All right, buddy. What, 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 what about ice? You want us to bring ice? What else do you want us to bring? Money, ice, how much? Whatever. All right. Put here all the way. Put that in the reel. All right. Got another fish on. Let's see what it is. I gotta pull up this. Yeah, it's right here. It's close. It's close. Yeah, it's right. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here, but we're gonna be cutting our fishing trip short. So this is my last fish. We're gonna reel in the lines after this, after I release him. Uh, but we got a call from Captain James, and if you've been a long time subscriber and been watching my videos, you know that I've done a lot of tournament videos on his boat. He has a 31 foot contender, controlled chaos, team controlled chaos. So he invited us out. And we're going to be going out of Palm Beach tomorrow doing some offshore fishing. There we go. Doing some offshore fishing. And I'm super excited. There's some dolphins out there, I believe. And maybe we can catch, have an opportunity to catch some cobia. And then we're going to be doing some bottom fishing. I love bottom fishing. Love to target muttons and awesome reef fish to eat. So super excited. We're going to head in right now and wrap up the video. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel. We have new videos every single week. And until my next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching.